Good evening. We'll call to order this uh, meeting of the Kettering Board of Education. Today is February 20th, 2024. It is 6.01 p.m. We're in the recital hall here uh, in the high school. Before we dive into the agenda, just a reminder of the mission of the district, which is in partnership with the family and community to guarantee a superior educational learning experience for all students by providing a positive and innovative learning environment while responsibly utilizing uh, resources. Mr. Taylor, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Kane. Here. Ms. Richards. Here. Mr. Lauder. Here. Mr. Henderson. Here. Uh, next item is adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank second. you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Mr. Taylor, call the roll, please. Mr. Lauder. Yes. Mrs. Kane. Yes. Ms. Richards. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Uh, at this time, if you're able, will you please uh, stand and join us in Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next item is approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? I approve we, or I move we approve the minutes as presented. Second. Thank you. Any discussion about the minutes? No. Mr. Taylor, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Richards. Yes. Mr. Lauder. Yes. Mrs. Kane. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Next up is uh, recognition and reports. Uh, portrait of a graduate, Mr. Von Handorf. Good evening, and thank you, Board President, Mr. Henderson, Board of Education members, Mrs. McCarty-Stewart, for the opportunity to present some amazing students for recognition tonight. I'm Dan Von Handorf, Assistant Superintendent at Kettering City Schools, and I'm pleased to be here tonight to continue our third year of recognizing outstanding students who exhibit the traits of our district's portrait of a graduate, a big part of the Kettering City Schools strategic plan for continuous improvement. Over 100 students, parents, staff, and community members met over the course of a year to develop the critical attributes our graduates would need to be successful in life. These attributes are engaged collaborator, lifelong learner, critical thinker, thoughtful communicator, and global citizen. I'm a member of a committee composed of administrators, teachers, and students who is charged with advertising the district's portrait of a graduate. One of the initiatives of this group was to ask teachers all across the district to nominate students who have demonstrated this month's featured portrait trait, critical thinker. We had over 150 students nominated as exemplar students of critical thinking. Of these nominees, each building was asked to select their top student from all those nominated. I'm pleased to present those top students to you this evening. Students, when your name is called, please come to the front of the recital hall to receive your certificate from Mr. Johnson and remain at the front until all students have been recognized. Our first student to be recognized tonight is from Beavertown Elementary, Tavi Vo. Hey, Tavi is a critical thinker. He consistently uses his prior knowledge to ask questions that add to his learning. Tavi works through problems he doesn't understand by making connections to what he does know, which allows him to explain things in his own words quite well. He's an exceptional kindergartner and is always responsible, respectful, and safe at Beavertown. Tavi was nominated by his teacher, Mrs. Lanning. Next, from Greenmont Elementary, Jamari Andrews. <clears throat> 
Jamari is a critical thinker. He loves to learn new information. He is always thinking about how the information presented can connect to what he already knows. He's willing to read about new information, ask questions, and hear ideas from others. He is engaged and loves learning about new things. Next, from Indian Riffle Elementary, is Stella Jones. <laughs> uh, let me go back. Jamari was nominated by his teacher, Mrs. Mata. Stella is an amazing example of a critical thinker in our fifth grade math classroom. She is thoughtful in asking questions and analyzing data. Stella is able to connect the dots between concepts, solve problems, think creatively, and apply new knowledge in many ways. Being such an outstanding critical thinker gives St Stella a leg up when making decisions on how to approach difficult math problems. She knows how to analyze what is being asked and apply what she knows to find the right answer. Stella won't give up and asks for more time to find a solution before I go over answers. This will stir serve Stella well in the classroom and on the basketball court as she has to critically think of what play will work best in any given situation. Go Stella. Stella was nominated by her teacher, Mrs. Frederick. Next from J.E. Prass Elementary, Sophia McCormick. <laughs> Using the tools she's been taught and the resources available to her, Sophia problem solves through difficult situations and academic tasks. Learning from previous mistakes, she thinks critically about the information presented and persistently works to achieve the correct answer and best result. Sophia was nominated by her teacher, Mrs. Minish. Next from JFK Elementary, Jamon Russell. <laughs> Jamon is an amazing problem solver. He can think of many solutions to a problem, and then he is able to figure out what is the best solution. He is always willing to help his friends with solving problems. He gives suggestions to them in a respectful way. He can often predict problems and is able to solve them before they occur. He is an amazing critical thinker. Jamon was nominated by his teacher, Mrs. Storr. From Oakview Elementary, Carter Davies. <laughs> Carter is a natural born leader in problem solving. She is always up for trying something new and challenging. She is resilient when it comes to accomplishing the task at hand. Even when she makes mistakes, she learns and grows from these experiences. Carter is a natural born critical thinker in all aspects of her educational career. Way to go, Carter. Carter was nominated by her teacher, Mrs. Treen. Next from Orchard Park Elementary, Allie Stanford. Allie is a critical thinker because she always takes her time and carefully makes decisions and selects answers based upon what she has read. Allie was nominated by her teacher, Mrs. Fote. Next, from Southdale Elementary, Luke Conley. Luke is an amazing Portuba graduate and a critical thinker. He strives to do his very best every day and works his hardest to show improvement over time. He goes above and beyond and pushes himself to think about problems from multiple perspectives. He is able to explore different strategies when solving problems. Luke is open-minded and willing to listen to others. He is willing to help his peers and uses critical thinking to understand their thought process. Then explore how he can best help them. Luke is always engaged and driven to learn, no matter what the subject or challenge he faces. 
Luke was nominated by his teacher, Mrs. Zanos. Next, from Kettering Middle School, is Inara Rodriguez. <laughs> Nara Rodriguez is a true picture of a critical thinker. She knows how to problem solve personal and social struggles that come her way. She is also a fact finder. She has a great interest in science and can often be found making slideshows on various topics just for fun. As a former science teacher, I appreciate that. <laughs> she has a great interest in science. When researching her new science topics, she examines the information methodically and in detail. Her excitement about the information she learned is so evident. She's also very persistent at reaching and maintaining her goals. Nara currently has a 4.0 GPA and has held this GPA her entire sixth and seventh grade year. Lastly, she learns from her mistakes. When problems arise at school, she is quick to analyze what went wrong and find solutions to make it better next time. For these reasons, Nara Rodriguez is my portrait of a graduate critical thinker nominee. Nara was nominated by her counselor, Mrs. Zucchini. Next, from Van Buren Middle School, Madeline Kovacs. Maddie embodies the characteristics of a critical thinker through her proactive problem solving. She diligently seeks facts, analyzes information, and persistently works towards goals, learning from her, from her mistakes along the way. Her inquisitive nature and resilience makes her a valuable contributor to our learning environment, fostering intellectual growth and adaptability. Madeline was nominated by her teacher, Mr. Duncan. And finally, from Fairmont High School, Gabe Hall. <laughs> Gabe is always my go-to in his class for having knowledge in a wide range of areas. If he doesn't know the answer, he will take it upon himself to do the research and report back to his class. In addition, he will often bring up perspectives that no one else has considered which makes for interesting discussions in English class. He does an outstanding job considering the bias in the information as well. Gabe was nominated by his teacher, Mrs. Murray. This group represents just some of the many examples of students who exemplify the portrait of a graduate. Let's give them all one more round of applause. <laughs> So we have two things we need to do. First, uh, let's get you all lined up for a picture, and Mrs. McCarty Stewart is going to help us do that. So if you could line up right in front here. Tell parents now's a good time, but you're already doing that. <laughs> All right, we got them. All right, and then students, the second thing, and Gabe, maybe you could lead us. Uh, if you could uh, go to that end, and I know our treasurer, Board of Education, and superintendent would like to congratulate you. So if you could go through, they would love to congratulate you all. The impact of a growth spurt has on kids, uh, <laughs> exhibit A right there. 
So students, as you are, are taking your seats, I'm sorry, Mr. Von Handorf, uh, uh, I've, I've cut you off, so. Oh, no, I was gonna say, you brought it up, but uh, Stella, don't be late for bas basketball practice, 7.45, <laughs> right? I'll see you in just a little bit. <laughs> Stella, I'm shocked as to why you'd be interested in basketball. It just doesn't make any sense. But uh, So students, congratulations on being recognized uh, by your teachers. It's quite an accomplishment, and you, hopefully you are very proud of yourselves because you exemplify what's the best uh, amongst our students. And so congratulations. Uh, the, the board is very impressed. And for those of you who are family and, and guardians and grandparents, uh, we know that students have success because of in large part because of uh, the surroundings uh, and the people who support them. And so congratulations to you all as well, as we know that uh, it's no easy task raising uh, little ones. And so um, glad you're all here and congratulations again. Uh, so with that, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is uh, an update on the Kettering Middle School building and Mr. Snyder. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity tonight to provide some updates and some highlights. Centered around Kettering Middle School. Yeah. So uh, as people are transitioning out, which is completely appropriate, so give me just a moment. Just close out the... They know not what they're going to miss, Mr. Snyder. So please, please don't do, do not do not take offense. Yes, do not take offense because uh, they'll, it's it's. <laughs> With that, Mr. Snyder, if you want to take it away, please. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks. I'm happy to have the opportunity to provide some updates and highlights um, about Kettering Middle School. Our um, the highlights that I'll talk about tonight are really centered around our district and building goals of safety and wellness, quality learning environment, and climate and culture. And the great thing about those is um, we find that when we're impacting one, we're probably impacting one or both of the others. They're very connected and, and aligned to one another. With regards to safety and wellness, a few of the things that I want to highlight uh, begin with our school resource officer, Ed Simone. He's at KMS uh, every day, full time. And Officer Simone um, not only helps with safety just with his presence, but um, he's also fully integrated into our building. He does a great job of building rapport and relationships with all of our students, our staff, and he's a great resource for our families, uh, students and staff as well. We're happy to have him there. We also uh, have installed this year uh, four of the visitor, uh, Raptor visitor management systems. Uh, those are available. Uh, they're up, up, up and running in all of our entrances that our community would use. We have four of those total at KMS. Uh, another safety feature that we have at KMS um, and in all of our buildings is the uh, interior door locking devices. Those are on the inside of all of our classrooms. Um, able to just be dropped in, and those are devices that our students and staff are able to practice using during safety drills throughout the school year. Also centered around safety and wellness, we provide some opportunities for parents to come in and get some information as well. So our first uh, parent seminar that we offered this year, we're excited about those, was centered around navigating the digital world that middle schoolers and, and kids um, have to navigate the you know the access that they have on smartphones and through social media is I mean that's hard for the kids to navigate it's also difficult for parents to navigate too so we thought it was important to provide an opportunity to educate them and um, give them some tools on how to navigate that landscape that one took place in December we also have a parent seminar coming up in February that our parents can attend centered around um, 
becoming educated about vapes, learning more about those. So we're happy to have those opportunities for our parents to come in. Quality learning, um, I thought it would be timely to talk about um, our, our master schedule at our middle schools. We're, we're in the midst of scheduling for the 24-25 school year, and it's a really exciting time for our students. Um, year two of a, of a new master schedule at the middle schools, and that new schedule has allowed for a really robust menu of electives that families can choose from. It gives us a designated time uh, for SEL curriculum, for intervention, PBIS reinforcement. Um, there's a lot of great things that come with that new schedule. Looking at the middle school electives, we actually have 20 electives that students can choose from in grades six, seven, and eight. And that is not common um, amongst other middle schools in the area. To have that many uh, selections for students and families to choose from and get some exposure to some of these courses, I think is uh, something for us to really be proud of. We also have a time in that master schedule that we can intervene with kids uh, for reading and math. Um, that time is called success seminar. It's important to have that designated time every day to be able to do that. Um, provide research-based interventions to reteach and um, remediate as needed and also provide some enrichment to some of our kids. It's, it's going really well so far this school year of our students who were um, who demonstrated need to be in one of those interventions, 30% of them have moved their way out of that, which is a great thing. Our students are working hard and, and taking that time seriously, and we're glad to have it built into our schedule. We're also able to offer some honors levels courses beginning in grade six um, with math and ELA, continuing in grade seven and eight. And then in eighth grade, students can take um, honor science beginning in eighth grade. And so that would be students who are um, identified as gifted and or students whose data and performance um, illustrates that um, that would be an appropriate placement for them. Centered around climate and culture, a lot of the work that we do um, is, is our PBIS tier one and tier two practices uh, partnership in schools of excellence and prevention. And this year we've, we've made a a really um, strong effort to increase student recognition when they're meeting those expectations. That's an important part of PBIS. Um, our work in, in PBIS has yielded some really good results. Uh, that foundation is strong. We're able to provide um, modeling of those expectations, analyze data, and then make decisions based on that data. Looking at some of that data uh, from January 23 to 24, we've noticed a decrease of about 23% with regards to discipline referrals. And what that tells us is that um, our students are doing a really good job meeting those expectations. They're doing a better job uh, in January of this year than they were of last year. And um, our students should feel good about, about that. That's a good outcome for them. Our staff should feel good about that too. Um, students and staff should feel good about recognition that we get through our work in PBIS. We were recognized by the state earlier um, this year. That's something that our kids should feel really good about. So should our families and our staff. Um, not why we do it, but they should feel good about that. Some other things uh, around culture and climate. We try to recognize positive student behaviors through the use of Firebird Bucks. Uh, portrait of a Graduate nominations, like what occurred tonight, Student of the Month nominations, and Firebird Pride Awards. Uh, this is one example. Um, in our sixth grade unit, we have a display case filled with books that one of our staff members wrote a grant for, and uh, that is called our, our Bucks for Books uh, case there, where kids can cash in their Firebird Bucks for books if they want. Um, they have the availability to cash in some other things too. That may not be a huge draw, but it's a great thing to highlight. One of the ways um, that we're working to, to reinforce those positive behaviors. We've also had some cool events going on recently centered around climate and culture. This is a new one that is just up and running. It's a dessert club 
where uh, some of our staff members have partnered with uh, Noon Optimist and Dorwood Optimist. Um, we begin uh, with eighth graders, but this is the first night. This happened pretty recently. They were able to decorate some cookies, and then uh, kids were also able to present about what they were grateful for that night with regards to our volunteers being there and um, how that makes a positive impact on them. So great opportunity for our students there doing that. Um, these are some photos from Red Ribbon Week that occurred earlier in the school year. That's centered around a drug-free campaign. Uh, homeroom classes were able to decorate their doors for Red Ribbon Week. Um, that's a great positive message and a, and a good way uh, with the door decorating contest to uh, help build some, some climate and culture. Uh, also earlier this year, uh, one of our staff members, Theo Hale, uh, spearheaded Autism Awareness Week at KMS, which was just a great event. That's a photo of Theo um, at the end of that week, and, and he helped um, design some activities and things for our students and staff to do to support autism. One of those days, he asked students and staff to all wear blue. Uh, this is a photo of part of one of our lunch groups, and you can see that almost all of those kids were wearing blue. It was just outstanding. Uh, Theo is a is a valued member of our staff, and he did a really good job spearheading this event that week. Another fun thing that we do in March, uh, kind of in conjunction with March Madness, the NCAA tournament, um, we set aside a little bit of time in homeroom for teachers um, to facilitate a rock, paper, scissor tournament with kids. The winners of each homeroom go into a bracket, kind of like March Madness style, and then uh, they go through and compete. Um, and then at the end, the finalists, we do this in central unit with our sixth graders. Uh, we have a staff member, so the winning staff member and the winning student come down for uh, video announcements that we do live every morning, and um, they compete in the finals. And uh, just kind of a cool thing to, again, kind of center around climate and culture. Uh, it's important to have some of those, those fun activities for students and staff to do. And um, that is all of the highlights that I have for this evening. Again, I appreciate the opportunity for coming to be able to share that. Thank you. Brian, do you have a minute for two quick questions? Yeah. Earlier, you, when you were shown curriculum, one was world language. Yep. Is that a um, survey of multiple languages, or do students select a language? So they would select a language. A language. Uh, they're able to take that in the morning here at the high school. And... Um, they, they arrive at Kettering Middle School just a little bit later, but that, that is one of their electives that they take. They begin their day here at the high school for that. And that you've partially answered my second question, and that was, do students from the middle school, both yours and Van Buren, do they have the opportunity to take classes up here at Fairmont? They do, and most of those students will be taking world language. Uh, we do have some students who are uh, subject accelerated, uh, and I was so, wondering about math or science. So some of those students, uh, you have some students who would be taking math at the high school too. Um, not as many as world language though, but right. that does occur. Yep. Great. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep. All right. Thank you. Mr. Schneider, thank you. There's, uh, we know there's an awful lot that goes into positioning our students uh, as best as possible to be successful in the classroom beyond just the, uh, the content of the curriculum and a lot of exciting things going on at KMS, so we appreciate you sharing tonight. Moving on in the agenda, next item is a Board of Education Committee reports. Any members want to share any reports? I, I don't know whether to report, but I will share that on uh, February 10th, the, the school district, the athletic, Fairmont Athletic Hall of Fame inducted uh, six new members, and uh, those individuals are Vocal Krajewski, Denny Prizer, Alex Gross, Catherine Westbelt, Jennifer Grady and uh, Andrea Kelsey. That's a two-day event with the actual installation on Saturday afternoon. And I think it was well received and well attended. Thank you. Uh, next item is hearing of the public regarding uh, agenda items. And uh, don't have any indication anyone's interested in sharing thoughts with us tonight on agenda items. That'll take us to information for decision-making items for upcoming meetings. Our next three meetings will be March the 5th, 2024. Uh, that will begin with a 5.30 p.m. record commission 
um, meeting in the treasurer's office, followed by a 6 p.m. board work session in the Kettering Board of Education uh, boardroom. Uh, the agenda items for the work session will include uh, some treasurer items, superintendent items, and then uh, board items uh, as well. The next meeting will be March 19th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Uh, regular meeting here in the recital hall. The agenda will include uh, personnel items. Um, and then April the 2nd, 2024, 6 p.m. work session, again in the Kettering Board of Education boardroom. That agenda will include treasurer and superintendent items along with uh, potentially some board items. That takes us next to the human capital agenda. And let me ask first, is there a motion with respect to uh, item 9A of the human capital agenda? I move that we approve the cap human capital agenda 9A regarding uh, certificated employees. Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion about item 9A? Ms. McCarty-Stewart? Uh, asking the board's approval for the human capital recommendations as presented. Thank you. Any questions, discussion? Mr. Taylor, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Lauder? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Moving on to item 9B of the human capital agenda, is there a motion? I move that we approve the human capital agenda, uh, item 9B, regarding classified employees. Thank you. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Thank you, Ms. McCarty-Stewart. Asking the board's approval for the classified employee recommendations as presented. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Taylor, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Kane? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Mr. Lauder? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. That takes us to item 9C. Is there a motion? That we approve the human capital agenda, item 9C, with regards to the district calendar. Second. Thank you. Ms. McCarty-Stewart. Yeah, just for clarification, um, for the board and for any in our audience, uh, we have made an adjustment to the school calendar in regards to the solar eclipse day, and we wanted to make sure that it was corrected and it represents this current school calendar. Thank you. Uh, any questions or discussion about the calendar change? Mr. Taylor, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Lauder? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Mr. Henderson? <clears throat> yes. That takes us to the business services agenda. Uh, is there a motion on Friday, uh, item 10? I move we approve the business services agenda as it's been presented. Thank second. you. Thank you. There's a, there's a motion and a second. Second. Thank you. Um, Ms. McCarty-Stewart? Asking the board's approval for the two items listed under the business of service agenda item as presented. Thank you. Any questions or discussion about the business services agenda? Mr. Taylor, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Richards? Yes. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Lauder? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Item 11, Office of the Treasurer agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. I move that we approve the... Uh, Agenda of the Office of the Treasurer. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you. Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Quick uh, presentation this evening on the uh, financial uh, statement for January 2024. It's in your packet. Just covering some quick highlights. Um, we are seven months through, through January. Uh, we're still using the fall forecast, which was adopted back in October. And the variances continue to be positive. However, you'll notice they're slightly less than they were in December, and there's a very good reason for that, mostly on the revenue side, and I'll highlight that on the very next slide. So you'll notice on the chart on the bottom right, the top line, and it's very small, it references rollback in Homestead to the tune of negative 1.1 million, and this is completely my fault. It's an error in the software. I had that as an estimated revenue to be received in January when in fact it's not gonna be received probably until April or May. Um, so it's just a timing issue. I, it got past me, I didn't get it fixed before the report was published. So it's forever gonna be published, showing a negative 1.1 million. Ouch. So if you wanna add that to the 911,000 that's positive, it brings you to about 2 million positive on revenue. So it, it is better than it was in December. However, it does kind of skew the numbers and it's completely my fault. So I'll be 
reminding you next month because it's still going to be there, <laughs> and again in May because it'll probably still be there. However, we're still trending positively on revenues, and this is obviously um, in conjunction with the fair school funding model that hit. I had very conservative numbers in the fall forecast. We're seeing the actual benefit of the cash that's coming in um, on the positive side. So very good story. Those numbers will be updated in the spring forecast. On the expenditure side, these are still trending positively. We're positive 314,000. However, the middle on the left box will show you where our problem child is and its purchase services. A lot of that is student health and wellness that we added this year as far as contracts with Montgomery County for Cartwheel and those other services that we're providing to students that were not in the original budget that we adopted in the fall. So we will be adjusting that. You know, we have the positive on the revenue side with interest earnings and that kind of stuff that we're paying for this, so it's not a shock. Um, we are just overspending that line, but we are underspending in other areas, so we still have a positive variance to the fall forecast. Upcoming items, the, actual, the spring forecast will be due here in April. Um, so March 15th is the regional meeting that I'll be attending to get um, meetings with the consultants to kind of get that thing hammered out. I'll be presenting it at the April 2nd work session, and then it'll be brought back at the April 16th regular meeting for your ratification and submission to the Department of Education. Um, so you have a two-month window there for any input you can give me, and I would appreciate anything you have. Um, with that, that concludes my section of the agenda this evening. I ask your approval of these items. Mr. Taylor, thank you. Any questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Taylor, will you please call the roll, please? Mr. Lauder? Yes. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Next item is teaching and learning agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me, is there a motion? I move that we approve the teaching and learning agenda as presented. Second. Thank you, Ms. McCarty-Stewart. Asking the board's <laughs> approval for the four items under teaching and learning as presented in the agenda. Thank you, any discussions or questions concerning the teaching and learning agenda? Mr. Taylor, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Lauder? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Uh, next item on our agenda is hearing of the public, and I do have an indication that uh, I believe uh, Bonnie Titus. Titus, thank you. Um, Ms. Titus, uh, if you will uh, come to the podium up here, um, tell us uh, who you are, your address, any affiliation that you may have. Oh, sure. And then um, before you get started, there'll be a big clock, I think, that'll be up here that'll tell you in terms of the time. So uh, uh, whenever you begin, uh, the clock will go off. And so uh, if you get to the end and you run out of time and we have to interrupt you, it's not to be rude, it's just because of the way sure. that our rules work. So I'm going to try to keep it under five minutes. Oh, please. <laughs> um, my name is Bonnie Titus. Um, my address is 2261 East Stroop Road, Kettering, Ohio, 45440. Um, I have uh, three children in the district, uh, one at Kettering Middle School, one at Indian Riffle, and one in the preschool program at Indian Riffle. Um, so in response to LifeWise Academy attempting to start a during school religious program under release time, I ask that Kettering City School District reviews all policies regarding third party program promotions and short policies protecting regular classroom scheduling. I spent the last few weeks talking to other parents inside and outside our district about the program. I have read accounts of how the program's presence disrupts schooling to accommodate students who participate and reduces the quality of education, specifically with specials, uh, for students who do not participate. This is especially concerning in classrooms where the majority of the class may be withdrawn as, as seen in some districts. Um, I can see how budgets could be redrafted to reduce offerings in the wake of lower numbers, uh, which is a concern. Um, I've also heard accounts of teachers wearing LifeWise Academy shirts on school property and promotional materials being included alongside standard school information beyond what is allowed for other activities. Um, if LifeWise is a program a parent wants, they should request enrollment information from their program privately. Um, people are imperfect, and sometimes it can be unclear what action is or is not uh, consistent with school's policy um, and the law. 
These small actions can, over time, create an environment, especially at the elementary age, where non-school programs are endorsed and encouraged, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, young children will draw their own conclusions if a large group leaves and they are given busy work every week. Um, programs like LifeWise undermine the role of public education. The district needs to keep the boundaries between public and private programs in mind in defense of our children. Um, and also, just as an aside, after watching that fantastic presentation about the middle school electives, I do know that LifeWise um, would like to continue their program into the middle school years, and it's unfortunate to see the electives that that would then end up competing with and the academic loss that could result in. Uh, so that sums up my remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, that brings us to our final agenda item, which is adjournment. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Tain. Yes. Ms. Richards. Yes. Mr. Lauder. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. That concludes our board meeting. Thank you, everyone.